Halo teman-teman, hari ini kita kedatangan tamu yang keren banget. Namanya <laughs> Stephanie Poetry. Uh, namanya udah rame banget lah di social media, Instagram, YouTube, dan lain-lain. Lagu-lagunya juga keren banget, termasuk tentunya I Love You 3000, Appreciate Straight To You. So, jadinya hari ini saya mau bincang, bicara sama Stephanie atau Meni. Inilah Endgame. Hey, Stephanie. Hello. How about how are you? I'm good. How are you? Okay, good, good. <laughs> just just to get things clear, mm-hmm. just call me by my first name or you can call me bro or dude. Don't call right. me Om. All right, bro. Okay, <laughs> bro. Look, I, I want to I want to spend the next few minutes talking about your early background, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, you you were born in Jakarta. Uh, oh, saya anak Tangerang. Oh, anak Tangerang. Yeah. Okay, okay. Jabodetabek, yeah. Yep. Okay, and the year 2000, so you're mm-hmm. 20 now. You're born on the 20th of April. Yes. Which is which makes you a Taurus. Yeah. And, and my daughter is a Taurus. I've heard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and tell me about about how you've grown up, uh, you know, in Jakarta and. Yeah. So aku lahir tanggal 20 Mei 2000, and I was born in like. Tangerang, which is which is like really hard to explain to people sometimes because it's easier to just say Jakarta, and then so I would say Jakarta, but actually I am a Tangerang Selatan kid, uh, and yeah, I grew up um, with my mom most of the time, and I have three siblings, and they're really cool, and yeah, music has always been a part of my life, and so your mom probably sang while you were probably, inside her. Yeah, I mean, I remember she. So she, what she would do is, she, dia suka nulis lagu. To all, for all of her kids, and so she has this song, "Name Stephanie," and it's like the funniest song ever. So, if you want to like listen to it. Sebelum meni lahir. Dia aku umurnya tujuh pas okay. lagu itu. Okay. Okay. Terus? Yeah, it's uh, it's really funny, and I feel like I have a very different life than most kids because people know my mom, and I'm always known as Titi Dijah's daughter. So baru-baru ini, I started becoming Stephanie Putri. You prefer to be called Stephanie or Mani? I know your Mani, mom calls see. you Mani, right? Yeah, every, okay. even my teachers call me Mani. Even my um, manager in America calls me Mani, even though she says it with an accent. Okay. okay. Mani. <laughs> did you? And, and you went to Global Jaya. Yes, I did. Okay, was that your your mom's decision because it's close to mm-hmm. home or because it was a good school? It was... Or both? Both, definitely, but also my dad... Um, He used to be a marching band instructor, and jadi susah gitu to basically have a child and be traveling so much. So he wanted to get a more stable job, and he became the music teacher at Global, and it was just perfect because you know I would go to school with dad, and I've been there since I was taka until I graduated. So okay. I never moved schools. <laughs> okay. Never had to find new friends. <laughs> yeah, but it's a great school, and uh, recommend. <laughs> okay. He he he's from Texas, right? Mm-hmm. And and I recall he uh, went to the Stephen Austin University in Nacogdoches, Texas. Mm-hmm. I, I spent quite some time in Texas. I've heard. And, and <laughs> how do you find your dad uh, in terms of how he would have influenced you in a big way musically? Yeah, well, I definitely learned how to write music through him. Aku ingat aku lagi ke Amerika, because we used to only go every two years to see our my grandparents in America, and we were on a train ride, and that was my first ever music lesson, and he taught me how to write songs. And Train ride dari mana ke mana? I was, I think, from like... Houston? It was on the left side of America. Okay, like somewhere. in California? Yeah, I okay. think we were like San Francisco to somewhere. Okay. But... Um, he's, <laughs> left side of America, yeah, I, I like that. I forgot, I like, <laughs> that's my understanding. Um, but he he's a complete like Houston country kind of guy. Okay. So he taught me how to write country, which is that's very tough, much man. like country, country storytelling, music right? Yeah. So he taught me how to write things um, as if it was a story. And so that's why a lot of the songs I write tend to have very like descriptive language. Kayak, oh hari ini aku di kamar, kamarnya hmm. gelap gitu. Jadi, it's very like... <laughs> Or Cerita my gitu. cow died this morning. No. <laughs> oh no, not the cow. <laughs> And then? And uh, yeah, so I learned most of the songwriting from him. But definitely the industry side, the business side is all from mom. Okay. So it's a good mix. She's a go-getter, man. She is. Yeah. I've heard you've interacted with her. Yeah, a uh, long time ago when I was uh, 
you know, gigging, and mm-hmm. she was in the in the audience, and we we had asked her. This was at the Hard Rock Cafe mm-hmm. in 1992, long time ago, when when I was that small. <laughs> <laughs> but Still but very cool. tell tell me about your okay. Were you sort of like forced into music, or did you kind of like? It's, feel naturally magnetized? Yeah, it's it's a weird question because never at any point were they like kodok-kodok kayak, eh, meni, nyanyi dong atau apa gitu. Uh-uh. They were like, do anything you want. Yang penting okay. gak negatif gitu. Okay. Cuman, I feel like as I grew up, you know, and I was really opposed to the idea of getting into music because no one ever forced me to, I started realizing that like if I don't do anything about it, I'm wasting all of the lessons that my mom and dad gave me you know, without them even realizing it. Okay. Jadi kayak, a part of me always wanted to do it, but actually, I started getting into the industry not wanting to be a singer. I actually, really? and even still now, I want to be um, a songwriter and a producer and okay. hopefully write for other people. But maybe in the future. Well, that's, that's too small. But I, I really Just like it. I mean, writing and producing. I, I feel like. bigger than that. Well, but I feel like, I think there's a certain kind of like, success that comes with being able to write for other people mm. and have them like it and interpret it okay. you know opposite to me just singing my own songs pertama kali kapan di pojokin untuk nyanyi di depan orang um, kalau nyanyi sih sering apalagi dulu mama kan suka kayak perform perform terus kayak sering sama anak-anaknya gitu yeah. um, cuman nggak pernah dipaksa sih tapi aku ingat pas aku decide untuk take a gap year um, my mom kayak kamu coba aja gitu kalau Kalau pengen jadi songwriter, coba nyanyiin lagu diri sendiri. Ntar pasti ada orang yang lama-lama pengen. That was recent. Yeah, it was right. really recent. No, I was talking about when you were a kid, like oh, when you were like four or five. Oh, that that mom and dad really. asked you to sing at a birthday party or what? Not really. I mean, it was like I would sing with my siblings, but I was okay. never asked to, because I was always shy. Wow. <laughs> so they they It's knew amazing. if aku nyanyi itu harus dari pilihan aku sendiri. <laughs> So you just pretty much came out, right? Recently, I mean, it wasn't like an incremental type of journey. It's just like it, you yeah. popped, right? You, Tauruses are very um, sudden, you know, spontaneous, <laughs> as you can tell. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I want to talk about your 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 earlier musical journey. Okay, uh, before we talk about your other stuff okay. uh, when you were a kid. I mean, you're still a kid, but when you were younger, <laughs> uh, you. you you were dragged into the My Chemical Romance concert, mm-hmm. right? It was. I think it was like Lincoln Park, actually. Like okay, Lincoln Park. Did you mm-hmm. think that it was Korean? By any no, chance? <laughs> I didn't know about K-pop <laughs> until I was like 16. But um, yeah, I think it was weird because I grew up with so many like artistic influences that now I think the thing is a lot of pe- as I grew up, a lot of people thought that if you like pop, you were basic. So you have to like ah, other stuff, okay. but because I was, was influenced, cool yeah, makanya, tapi yeah. dari kecil I listen to so many different types of songs. Jadi kayak sekarang tuh aku nggak apa-apa. I like that I like pop. You know, it's it's not basic. Great. It's, it's fun, yeah. and it's also okay that if you don't. So that's definitely one thing. Okay, then how was the experience watching the two concerts? It was Chemical Romance and Linkin Park. <laughs> Jadi I remember I was pretty young, but is <laughs> that interesting, good or interesting bad? It's really interesting, good, oh, yeah. but it was really okay. I assumed it was a certain type because when I watch TV, right, I see like Hannah Montana and all these, and it's very, <laughs> it's a very PG thirteen kind of situation. Mm. But um, I wasn't like you know standing; I was like sitting down in the back area of the stadium. But it was also cool because that was the first time I heard a band play music live that I used to listen to like on a CD. Right. So it was very. It was very cool, but I was—I think I was still too young to also put that connection. Mm. So just like, okay, cool, they're playing the song. Okay, would you write stuff today that would have been inspired by what you heard back then when you were watching these two concerts? I think if you really think about it, maybe, <laughs> but I doubt it. I feel like it's—it's—it's it's, it's such an old part <laughs> yeah, yeah, of that me. That was a while ago. Yeah, but I think who I am now is definitely affected by that. What was what was. Okay, th- talk about your hobbies other than music. My hobbies, I really like badminton. Oh man, that hit <laughs> which me. I, which I know. That hit me. You know, um, but yeah, especially I, I, at some point earlier, I used to be involved mm-hmm. with badminton. 
the association. Oh, like you play actually? Or... Oh, yeah, I used to play a long time ago, mm -hmm. but but I was involved with the badminton association here. Yeah, it's a uh, it's really cool. <laughs> so yeah. I'm like fangirling a little bit, but um, it's also a very easy sport to play. Like even during now with everything that's going on, the, you the just... first set is usually easy. The second set is yeah. harder. <laughs> I always play doubles, so I don't have to be oh, so okay. tired. <laughs> Mixed doubles or women's doubles? Oh, uh, I used to play women's doubles okay. with my best friend. So we were both like in one team. And we just knew because we were best friends. Okay. And yeah, it's a, it's a very easy sport because as long as you have like the racket and the ball, it's like you can play anywhere, right? And I, so. I gotta I gotta hook you up with some of the badminton players. They're uh, awesome. I would I would find and, and I, so I hard. bet you they're big fans of yours already. Oh, uh, amen. <laughs> <laughs> and and you know uh, Liliana Natsir, mm -hmm. Gracia, mm -hmm. and all the rest. I mean, you know they're that's so cool. Yeah, superheroes. They are. It's 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 really it's really interesting because I remember um, when we were in high school, mm. it was like there were so many sports to choose from, and I remember I don't know why. Like I feel like badminton is is such it's such an Indonesian sport. Yeah. And so I always Banget. and I played it since I was like. Banget. Yeah. So yeah. I always felt like I wanted to play badminton. Berapa kali seminggu main? Dulu pas di sekolah kita latihan tiga hari seminggu. Um, and then, if we were lucky, we'd have like one match a week. Okay. Um, so but good. there are there are days when we won't have a match for a month, depending on like exams or something. I, I would urge you, encourage you to keep playing. I think it's a I really, really good sport. I actually, because I currently live in LA now. I mean, yeah. When I'm when this is not happening, but um, there's I just found a place where a bunch of Indonesian people would yeah, play. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm gonna. Try you know to the easiest. <laughs> Way to find Indonesians is to look for badminton, <laughs> badminton court, yeah. anywhere on the world. I heard. <laughs> true, true. What else? Apalagi selain badminton? Uh, I jadi pas di sekolah tuh aku nggak pernah ngambil kelas musik soalnya aku selalu ngambil kelas arts. Aku dari dulu suka gambar dan um, banyak juga kayak um, hal-hal kreatif kayak music video yeah. yang aku gitu-gitu itu yang gambar dan animasi juga aku. Because I feel like awesome. it's a really fun way to mix mm. those two worlds. Tapi, um, I wouldn't say I'm like good enough where I would think I'm a professional, but it is really fun. So uh, you're too modest. <laughs> no, but you know, it's a, it's a fun thing because it's still in that creative realm, but it's also like a different type of the okay. arts. And you, what draw now on a regular yeah, basis? Yeah, I do a lot of um, drawing and. Like a little bit of animation, mm. a little bit of pixel art. Like a lot of it is digital, yeah. because um, call it digital, you can press undo. We like and unless it's too late, right? Yeah. <laughs> and you play volleyball too. Talk yes, about that. Yes, I played volleyball. So I played volleyball um, for f five years, okay. and yeah, it was really fun. I was tall in my school. So I was like, you're relatively tall. Yeah, no, here no. I am, but yeah. in America I'm like oh, yeah. short. I mean, those guys are. So those. I was like, huh. but yeah, I remember um, it was definitely my favorite sport to play because I really liked my teammates and the teacher was really cool and it was the sport that taught me how to like uplift others okay. because I think at least when I was playing badminton it with my best friend and so even if we got angry it's like whatever we're best friends but when I did volleyball I remember banyak ada kelas and you had to find the right thing to say or else you're gonna make ada kelas kan imagine ada kelas kayak dimarahin kakak kelas nih kak Fian so it was really hard to figure out the balance of like you know telling them what's wrong but also not hurting their feelings and yeah. or bullying I, yes bullying is wrong no bullying I know you talked about that never bully yeah. people <laughs> Yeah. But yeah, it was a it was a fun sport. But how do you surf? Underhanded or overhanded? So I remember I tried overhanded for so long, and I only <laughs> got it right the last two years. Uh -huh. And so for the first three years, I had to do underhand. But it took you a must while. be pretty good in smashing both badminton mm. and volleyball. Oh, the anger inside me. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's it, it's mostly because I'm like considered tall. So they would put me as the smasher, but if I wasn't, you know, I think I'd be happy just chilling okay. in the back. Which one do you prefer between badminton and volleyball? Definitely depends on the day. 
Okay. And um, but I do feel like I have a special connection with badminton because yeah. I grew it's up with it. It's easier also to to find yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. time space. and space. Yeah, you can do it anywhere. Volleyball, you got to hook up with you know. Yeah, with twelve at, people. Yeah, <laughs> right. I mean, and if you're lucky, maybe six, so like three, three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's true. It's like a, but you can do beach ball. I mean, beach that's volleyball. That's true, but that's like, isn't it like super tiring? Yeah. Okay, okay, lompat di atas sand. Actually, beach volleyball is much more tiring. Than, than anything else. So I think like when you jump on sand. Oh my god. It's a kaya. And if you fall, you get oh, bruises. Yeah. It's tough. You know, mm. I used to play a lot of volleyball uh, yeah. in my younger days. Oh, did you play beach volleyball or uh, a few times, but I, I didn't really like it. Mm. It's just agonizing. Yeah. Yeah. In the sun. <laughs> yeah. Now, um kalau hobi kan nyanyi, gambar, bulu tangkis, mm. volley, apa lagi? yang teman-teman mungkin pengen tahu atau hmm. perlu tahu. Aku apa ya? Ada ada banyak kayak hobi-hobi kecil yang tergantung hari ya sih. Okay. Kayak aku suka masak. No Tapi kidding. kayak wow. enough to get by when I'm alone. Okay. When I live alone. But I wouldn't say I would cook for people for fun, you know. <laughs> It's an embarrassing thing. Imagine if people don't like <laughs> your food. It's like the most <laughs> Like hurtful thing. I know you like Indomie. Yeah, it's an issue. That's not like, supposed to be a commercial, by the way. Oh yes, I like I like everything. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I always every time I in America, like I would tell people like, you should try this. Okay. Now, what what would have been the hardest part of schooling? You know, now that you finish mm-hmm. high school, I think you're you're probably planning to go to college, right? Mm-hmm. Or uni, as you might have said. Yeah, I say right. uni a lot. It's like people don't say that. <laughs> what 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 do you think would have been the challenges in your early scholastic years that that would have shaped you? Yeah. So the issue is, um, I've always, I think, in my opinion, I have um, good memory, yeah. and I feel like a lot of school is just memory, and so yeah. I never really had issues with um, grades or anything, okay. and so. My issue was actually with the social life of high school okay. and n- being like more focused on it. Jadi aku di sekolah tuh fokus banget ke nilai yeah. dan ke extra like, sports and everything that I remember the last year of high school I didn't eat lunch with my friends because okay. I studied at wow. lunch breaks and it was it was one of the things I regret because I feel like you I lost wish friends. yeah they were all my best friends and I wish I spent more time because They were the people who like shaped me as the person I am now. Yeah. I think it's very easy to say, oh, my parents shaped me and these teachers and mm. but I feel like my friends had more to say about who I am now and the yeah. way I speak and the things I like. Yeah. I would have never gotten into K-pop if my friends didn't like K-pop, you know. Absolutely. <laughs> so Absolutely. It's a uh, that's one regret I have, but I also feel like life will give you opportunities to make up make amends and yeah. hang out with them again. I don't think it, they have anything to say because they knew I was like so adamant in getting good grades. Yeah. Even though I ended up taking a gap year, so maybe a waste of time. I don't know. Your mom a tiger mom? Not at all. She's really? like the chillest She's mom. Laid back. She's so laid back. But I think a part of it is that's, also that's because it's great to have a chill mom. It is. <laughs> it's really great. Right. Um, and I think a part of it is because when she grew up, she realized that a lot of the things that she did to rebel and like. Wouldn't have happened if you know she had people who just let her do what That's they wanted to do. So, give up. I mean, there are definitely times when kayak, she would <laughs> negor kayak, eh, mani, jangan gini, jangan gini. Yeah. Tapi, um, but also, you know, none, none of her kids had issues that were too serious okay. in terms of like grades or friendship wise. So, okay. you know, think so it's you so. You have a lot mixed. of inner drive to just focus on sports, on yeah. school. <laughs> On music, right? Yeah, but I think a lot of it is also because um, my dad was at mm. first a teacher, and then he became the principal. Yeah, and a wow, part of me. How about some conflict of interest? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but a part of me, I never wanted him to 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 have like a bad image. Yeah. So I was always like, you know, I gotta make sure I'm like a good kid, and I show that you know he's a good parent because. Right. Like if someone sees a principal as a bad parent, then they don't trust them at all because they're like, "Why should I trust Connect. you? You can't even Connect. lead all these kids. You can't even lead your own." Gitu. Itu namanya wibawa. Yes. Yeah, kan? harus <laughs> harus kasih lihat wibawa. Yeah. Tanggung jawab dan segalanya. 
Okay, now uh, you think you're in junior high school or your high school would have been more memorable? Um, I think there were some things I could have done to make it more memorable, but all I can do now is just to like um, be okay with it okay. because I feel like maybe there, maybe I would have never became a singer if I didn't focus so much. I don't know, yeah. but you know, I always try to find the positive connection. Yeah. I think it's the easiest way to not regret things. Okay, aku ingat banget for the first couple of months, aku sangat regret ngambil gap year. Soalnya aku lihat semua teman-teman. Kapan nih ngambil aku, gap year? Ya, aku ngambil gap year immediately after I graduated. Okay, um, that's two years ago. Yeah, two years yeah. ago. And aku lihat teman-teman aku pada kayak, oh, moving into dorm, <laughs> terus kayak, you know, all these like college things, and I felt really left out. But um, you know, I would have never. Than what I'm doing now, if I didn't take a gap year, and so that's what I always tell myself. If it looks if it looks really bad right now, maybe it's like just a path to. So you got a great you got thing. the rebel in you, a right? Bit. You're not you're not the typical conformist, <laughs> right? <laughs> Would I you mean, say if, so? If, if all your other friends are going to university or mm-hmm. college, you 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 so choose to be different. It's cool. It's chill. Thank you. Right. Yeah, <laughs> that's think, that's within you, right? It's not because you got the endorsement from your mom. Oh no! Or what? It was a. It was. It was actually also a part of not knowing what it is that I wanted to do. Yeah. I have always been into psychology, and I love it. That's I a still, scary subject, man. It Are is. You, I hope you're not psychoanalyzing anybody now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you're good, no one knows. <laughs> okay. No, but I and my dad also does a lot of it, and so I look up to him a lot, and so okay. okay It's really nice to be able to help other kan. Jadi kayak I always knew I wanted to somehow get into it. Tapi I don't know. I felt like when I graduated, it was it was my only option, and I didn't want it to be my only option. And so I was like, you know, what? let me take a year to figure out if it is. Okay. And if I tried other things and I still ended up like in psychology, then I would take it. But you know, I found out I like other things, and I think you can always go back to college. Absolutely. <laughs> I know people who are going to universities when they're 60s, in their, in yeah. their 60s. I think that's really cool because yeah. it's like you're still that's learning. A, that's a real rebel. Yeah. I think it's pretty dope. For right? sure. I want to be like that. I want to I wanna somehow like have a bunch of degrees. Like just like <laughs> my wall is full of degrees of like random things like Apa culinary idea? school. <laughs> Psychology, culinary. Psychology. And I want to... Music. Um, music, yes. Okay. Um, Maybe like... Some biology stuff. Biology. Okay. Yeah, you know, one day, one day that will do something with genetics and stuff, and I want to make sure that like I'm involved. <laughs> okay. You, you ready to talk about genetics now, or? Not really. Okay. <laughs> But <laughs> We you can know, dwell into one that day. now. <laughs> when I'm 60. <laughs> no, man, it's pretty scary how you can actually edit. Yeah, it know? is. But I also feel like you know, it's 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 a confusing topic because to what extent is it like? Helping people. Yeah, it's like humanity is playing God. Exactly. On itself. But it's also like if God gave you these options, like you know, it's a, it's a it's yeah. a difficult question. It's it's scary. Okay, you 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 you've taken a gap year for mm-hmm. almost two years now. <laughs> it's not right? a gap year. So it's not a gap year. It's a gap years, right? Yeah, gap year. Have any plans on taking yeah. courses? A while, part of while, me. When do you go back to LA? Uh, once this is over. <laughs> You can actually fly. Yeah, to... but like a part of me is, is scared that I'm there, and then all of my friends who go to college there are back home yeah, in Indonesia. So, betul. Jadi, hampir semuanya udah balik sini. Yeah, jadi kayak I don't want to feel alone as well. And uh, I can work here. I've yeah. I've started like coming back to doing everything here, and then you know sending it to people there. Yeah. Cuman, um, yeah, I don't know. It's it's scary right now. Yeah. But. Can only... You want to talk about it? The COVID-19? What what your take is? Oh, I don't know. Man. It's like, I, I, I would love yeah. to talk about it, but at the same time, I don't know people's backgrounds and their circumstances. And yeah. I don't want to, you know, I come from a very privileged place where I can stay home because I have a home. Mm. You know, I think it's very hard to say like, stay home because some people yeah. have jobs and some people need to make money and do things. And it's, it's, it's a difficult topic, but... Yeah. I just hope this goes away for the sake of us all. As yeah, soon I can't as wait till the vaccines are out. Yeah, hopefully soon. Yeah, semestinya sih awal tahun depan. Yeah. Kalau itu keluar, kita juga masih harus nunggu kan. 
oh, iya, iya. distribusinya, komersialisasinya. Mm-hmm. And that that I think would be the logical time for you to make a decision on whether or not you go somewhere. For sure. <laughs> but, Jadi but, uh, lama banget di sini. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know, I've I've discovered that people can actually be productive from home, mm-hmm. but but going to the office or going to the studio, I think it's 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 a very much cultural event. Mm-hmm. And you need that. Mm-hmm. It's part of your life, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think you can stay at home and produce, you know, all your life. Yeah, totally agree. Um, I think, but I also feel like this might start a whole new wave of what normal is. Yeah. As they say, the I new agree. normal. And so, um, Zoom calls. I I didn't even think you could make a song on 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 a call. It's amazing. And uh, we've just started doing that, so that's really cool. It does it does make it weird though because they're like singing and it's like offbeat in my end and I'm like wait there is <laughs> like, that digital delay you yeah. know of like a fraction of a second exactly so I hope somehow they make like an app that will sync it perfectly I don't think it's I'm possible sure because somebody smart enough will figure it out that's true inilah endgame the episode endgame berikutnya You'll have another Indonesian. Wow, that would be crime. cool. I mean, you see a lot of producers in Indonesia right now that are doing so well. Yeah. So that's really cool. Siapa aja? I know we're genius with okay. their song Lati. Okay. Um, really cool. And I know that Gamaliel produces as well. Really cool stuff. And I uh, Petrasi Hombing okay. really like his music. It's it's like folky, 